Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show here on Amherst Media and it's co-sponsored with the Amherst League of Women Voters. And back for his second appearance on our show is our um, member at large of the town council and chair of the finance committee, longtime town uh, public official having been on the select board and the finance committee and done many things over the years. Uh, Andy Steinberg. So welcome back, Andy. Well, and thank you. Th thank you so much for being willing to come back. Um, I guess it wasn't too painful the last time, huh? So welcome back. And we're, um, we're focusing tonight on the budget because uh, we're getting deeper and deeper into the budget process. And so I wanted to ask you as chair of the Finance Committee first to just give us a quick uh, thumbnail of where we are in the process and what's going to come next. Okay, well, thank you. I uh, appreciate being here and appreciate being able to uh, inform the viewership about our budget process and the budget going forward. Uh, at this point, the town manager is working on developing a budget that he will propose to the council under the new charter. Um, he's required to make that budget proposal by May 1st, and um, he will do so. It will then be immediately referred to the Finance Committee for our review. So we do not know the details, but I know the broad parameters of what he will be presenting. But the specific line item um, amounts, what you were used to in your prior work in the Ways, with Ways and Means Committees, yeah. You don't know what the Ways and Means Committee proposes until they propose it. Well, we don't know what the town manager is going to exactly propose. So he's working with his department heads now to form a budget, which will yes. then go to the finance to the town council, which will refer it to the finance committee. How is that different than the process when we had a town meeting? Um, it or is it different? It, it is largely similar except the deadlines are very different okay. and then the action of the council and the action of town meeting are different. Okay. Uh, but uh, this budget process began uh, with the select board uh, giving some priorities and making suggestions. We knew we were, uh, I was speaking now as a former select board member, yeah have to switch roles a couple times. And, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, when we were on the select board, we knew we were not going to be seeing the process through to the end, but we made recommendations for consideration. In future years, the council would have that role. Uh, the, the manager then uh, looks at the budget, as does the superintendent for both of the re budgets he works with, the regional school budget and the elementary budget, which is a part of the town budget, and the library director. Um, in the prior form of government, we would have received the town manager's budget to the finance committee in January, and uh, then uh, the finance committee would have worked on it in February and March for review and um, decided what to propose to town meeting because town meeting needs, needed to get things in April in order to start a town meeting at the very end of April or beginning but, of May. But, but the manager now gives it to the council on May 1st, which is a whole extra four months for him to prepare his budget. Correct. And, of course, because we're no longer bound to the town meeting rules in town meeting season, we're now operating under a different set of uh, budget rules. So we don't really need to have the council act until the very end of the, fis uh, just before the beginning of the fiscal year, July 1st. So the council can wait until June to act, which is why the finance committee will be doing its work 
now in May that the prior finance committee that was a committee of town meeting would have done earlier in the year. So you have a couple of months to work on the budget after the town manager gives it to you. What do you do during that period? Actually, what will the committee we, be doing in the council? Actually, we have a much more constrained time for line than the old finance committee had. Uh, we um, are required to report back in 30 days in order to give the, the council time. Um, in in um, prior finance committee would have once a week meetings during a two month period. We're going to have twice a week meetings mm -hmm. during a month, and we're going to essentially be doing um, the same sort of thing. We will have posted public meetings, um, and I'll give an example on the public safety budget. We will have uh, the fire chief and the police chief, or um, with uh, their uh, assistant staff who, who may come with them to talk about what their budget request is about and uh, sort of give the um, flesh behind the budget. Not only this is the amount of money, but this is Why what we're we going to do. Yep. This is what our priorities are. And so is that before the town council as a whole or before the finance committee? or before the Finance Committee with all of the town councilors invited if they choose to come? Uh, option C. Okay. Uh, it, it's not mandatory for the rest of the council? Correct. We okay. are, we, all of our meetings are public and we have, will and have um, given our schedule to the um, council and it's available And will the, the other public. councilors be able to participate in asking questions during that, uh, those meetings or uh, only observe? Uh, they can ask me questions and will and uh, and where does the public fit into those meetings? It's open to the public, so the public can be in the audience. Uh, are they able to ask questions, or will there be a public comment period uh, attached to those hearings, as there are with the council meetings? Actually, all of our committees have um, public comment periods because Great. we believe very strongly in allowing public participation and encouraging public participation and uh, so having a public comment element to uh, the meeting will be important um, and uh, the big difference and I should stress this early I think I even mentioned it last time I was in the show but that's been a while, a while ago, ago. Yep. Um, is that um, in town meeting uh, town meeting could increase or decrease budgets as recommended um, under the new form of government and under the charter. And we're not unique in this. Um, the town council has the authority to remove or reduce, but does not have the authority to add something new. It would have to come back then as a supplemental budget request through the town manager uh, in a different so that process. means there's an awful lot more power in the hands of the town manager as compared to the previous budget uh, uh, process under the old government. Because um, you can't a increase. A little bit in theory, yes. And uh, <coughs> the, um, the analogy I'll give, by the way, is Northampton. Yeah. Um, this is exactly the process, except you substitute the word mayor for the two words town manager. Town manager, yep. But otherwise, the process is exactly the same. Uh, I can think of a couple of instances of examples where town meeting added to budgets in the last few years um, items that were not not had proposed either by the superintendent or the town manager. One was this, uh, an amount for social service funding in last year. There was in a, the other example I'll give for the schools is uh, an amount that would allow for addition of time for library paralegal staff. Um, in the budgets once voted by the Old Town meeting, um, the uh, question of whether it would be spent by the superintendent or the uh, town manager in those two examples was uh, still in, within their discretion, though it's a political question as to whether you want to ignore town meeting. 
So the big difference in this one is, is that if there's a strong feeling that something was left out of a budget, um, the uh, council would really need to come back and ask them uh, for a supplemental budget submission. It would not be a part of the annual operating budget. So there is a procedure for supplemental budget requests? Yes, and we actually have a head one already. That okay. was the Station Road Bridge. Okay. And that, what does that process look like? Roughly the same uh, as the annual budgeting process where uh, you go to the town manager, the town manager comes to the council, or can uh, a supplemental budget be initiated by the council itself? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the answer to that. Okay, but we'll call the lawyer and figure I, but, that out. But I, the Station Road Bridge was a recommendation from the town manager. Okay. And, um, you know, if the council uh, resolved to request that the town manager um, do something, then... That I would be a good way to do that? That would, um, okay. in and of itself, would draw strong consideration. Uh, the Station Road Bridge uh, had to go through the whole process as do all of our budgets where we need to have it referred to the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee needs to come back with a recommendation. There needs to be a hearing, um, a public hearing on it so that there's a public invited um, participation and um, all of that has to precede the action of the t uh, council on the budget. Um, and uh, we expect that uh, there, as we, well, we know that there will be a hearing that the Finance Committee will have in relation to the major operating budget. And the date has, at this point, been set for May 14th. And uh, the only portion that was split off and had a separate hearing uh, has already taken place on April 4th. And that was per the regional schools because it was uh, um, wise to deal with the regional school portion of the budget separately and in sync with the, our other member towns yeah. who are good. dealing with the town meeting schedule. Good. Now, you mentioned earlier um, you don't know the detail of the line items, but you know what the parameters are. Uh, can you address what the nature of the parameters and uh, to whatever extent you can share those uh, uh, in a way that would be useful for the viewers to hear, that would be great. Well, I think that it's very simple, and it really works out to the stand. 80% of the budget is the operating budget, and the operating budget um, is what um, provides police officers to provide public safety, firefighters to provide fire safety and um, provide the ambulance service, um, department uh, DPW staff to come in and plow roads and take care of roads and fill potholes. And, uh, you know, the bulk of it is personnel. They're personnel who are working for us now. They're providing service. And uh, schools uh, in that? Are the, the schools, schools in there? the schools are in the elementary schools are part of the regular budget. Yep. The um, regional schools are um, also within the bud a budgeted amount, but it's a different process. But it yeah. still amounts to the same thing. Yeah. We have a town that does things. We provide service for people. We provide important service for people, and uh, the uh, bulk of the budget ultimately is. What do we need to continue those services? So if and that's 80% of the budget, what's 20%? Well, it's 20% in the split in two fashions. Part of it is capital. And, um, you know, we can talk about that for a moment, but it's uh, we'll come back anywhere to, we'll come from back to the capital small budget. to big. Yep. And uh, the other part is there are certain mandated um, things that we have to do, things that prior legislators have told us we have to do, or prior contractual commitments. Um, pension. Give, pen, give you three real quick. Yep. Pension, yep. Uh, what's uh, called other post-employment benefits, which is we've made promises to retirees to pay their 
uh, health, health insurance, yep. and we need to pay their health insurance. Regional Transit Authority. Um, okay. I give you actually a fourth one: uh, charter school tuition. Uh huh. Okay. Very good. So, and that's basically that plus the capital is the other twenty percent. Yes. So let's talk about capital for a few minutes here. So uh, last week, uh, when our town council president was on, we went through the four major projects, and we went through the a uh, little bit about the roads and and uh, sidewalks, um, and uh, interested in your perspective as the chair of the finance committee about how people in town should be thinking about capital because it's an important part of the budget. There are important projects out there, um, but maybe the, the list is longer than can be done at any given time. How do, we, how do we as a community wrestle with that, and how do you as a finance committee chair wrestle with that? It is um, a challenge, and I'm, uh, I'm pleased that uh, the council president outlined the four major projects um, which have been um, something that the prior select board also had identified as prior projects and was working on as part of the difficulty that we're having right now is that because the school project was delayed, the cost to build a school has gone up. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be um, possibly paying more money to construct a slightly smaller school Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a matter and of And had it been the, done the first the delay. time around. Um, yeah. But we are where we are. That's right. And yeah. uh, so we, we do have some difficult decisions to make. And in order to be able to fund um, all of these projects, there's several things that we have to do. One is we have to look at how much we can build. You know, can we build the building that we ideally like or do we need to build something a little bit less and I analogize that to somebody's building their house and they're going to decide what they want to put into their house and how big they want to make their house mm -hmm. they make tough decisions mm -hmm. and as a uh, community we're going to have to make those same kinds of decisions um, second is uh, when you build something and uh, uh, so the spacing has, is a factor in um, the determination. Meaning the order in which you are going the to order take on and the how much you do because yeah. um, if you borrow a whole lot of money at once, um, it uh, you run into the ability to make those borrowing commitments. If you spread it out over a longer period of time, then the paying back of the bonds gets spread out over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have to make those decisions, and then another set of decisions that the council will need to make is um, at what point do we go to the voters for an, and ask them to consider a debt exclusion override? Mm -hmm. And um, that's a fancy term, but it really a, amounts to uh, what in other communities in the United States they call bond issues. Mm -hmm. It's asking the voters to authorize issuance of bonds to fund a specific building project and understand that their taxes will be increased for the period of time that is necessary to repay those bonds. So um, we are not going to be able to build all of these projects within the existing, existing revenue. revenue stream yeah. because revenue stream has to also pay back debt. Right. Um, so uh, we have to decide what it is that we're going to be asking our, of our voters, and then the voters will have to decide. And, of course, we know that there's some matching state funds for schools and library, which are two of the projects on the list, and, but there aren't for the fire station and DPW Correct. improvements that are needed. So um, those, those things will no doubt uh, have some influence in, in, in the discussion. But there is another option here, and that is to increase the tax base and you increase the tax base by uh, creating more uh, structures that are then taxed. And so, uh, in speaking with the town council president, Lynn Griesmer, in last week's show, 
she said the new uh, Community Resources Committee is likely at some point not so long from now to raise the question of creating some kind of a mechanism, either a committee or a task force or something, that will take a look at uh, economic development within the community. And uh, that's not necessarily in the jurisdiction of the Finance Committee. On the other hand, the revenue that might be generated by that would be available to the Finance Committee and, of course, the town manager and the council to be able to afford to do more of the work that we need to do in town. Uh, absolutely well stated, and I actually uh, asked to be considered and was appointed to the Community Resources Committee because I felt that it was important to have an overlap between the two committees because one side, the Finance Committee, is principally dealing with uh, the expense side of the budget. Uh, the other committee is dealing with the revenue side of the budget, but they're both the budget. Mm -hmm. And you can't have one without the other. Absolutely not. <laughs> now, uh, we got a little bit sidetracked uh, when we were talking about the parameters. Um, and I just want to make sure that you made all the points you wanted to make about that. You said that there was 80% of the budget um, was basically personnel and, and a bunch of services, and then the other 20% reflected um, contractual responsibilities, mandates, and capital. Correct. So, um, for example, in the state legislature, the only major parameter we have as we build the budget is what is, the, what is our revenue estimate that we're going to use for the next fiscal year, which is, which is basically a crystal ball exercise because nobody knows 18 months from now how much revenue will have been collected in the 12 months from the end of the fiscal year to the beginning of the, going back to the beginning of the fiscal year, and you're actually writing the budget six months before that, so you're projecting 18 months forward. So um, how, do you, uh, how do you handle uh, revenue estimates and are there any other parameters that you have to consider or the town manager has to consider when he's building the budget before you get to see all those line items? In October of every year, for, uh, for quite a number of years, we have uh, had a, uh, what we called at that point, a four board meeting because it involved the select board, the finance committee, the school committee, and the library trustees. And the meeting was with the town manager and the finance director, or finance department staff, and they would present their recommended budget estimates. And then um, the budget estimates would go through a process. They suggested um, a division of the operating budget side as to how much um, would, uh, should go to schools, libraries, and to uh, municipal functions. Uh, and uh, the current year, we're in sort of this transition. Mm -hmm. um, so the traditional four board meeting did in fact happen on October of 18. And uh, it was, uh, um, so we, we are working off of those estimates. Um, as in prior years, the um, staff looks at the um, actual numbers as they change. The taxation we can project pretty clearly. The part that is a little bit more difficult for us is the um, amount from state aid. And uh, mm -hmm. so we have to periodically test that against First, the governor's recommendation, and then the house recommendation, and ultimately this, and the house then recommendation is the right is ways and means. Then the house action. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in the senate. So it's an iter iterative process, process yeah. but um, which gets readjusted periodically. But I imagine that state had to do the same thing. Yeah, except for recessions, you can pretty well count on the governor's number being the least, and if the House matches that number, you know that you're likely to have a number at a 
approximately that. And a month later, the Senate budget will come out. So there was some predictability, even though you didn't get a resolution adopted by the legislature all the time, you got some predictability. Sometimes it was uh, a, a resolution adopted by the House, the Governor, and the Senate, and boom, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Other years, they, they didn't do a resolution, but it, as you went through that process, it got it got clearer and clearer what the number was going to be. Only in the recessions do you have the most serious of that uh, of that problem. Because what if the revenues keep tanking? Believe me, I remember that because I was on the finance committee of the <laughs> old town meeting back in the days of the last recession. So I <laughs> lived it, and uh, the number kept changing. Uh, this year, which is what we're really ultimately concerned about, right. um, the projections that were made in October have so far held to be pretty good through the governor's budget. Okay. And uh, obviously, if the House Ways and Means Committee does something radically different from what the governor's number was, that will be a number that is known to the town manager before he presenting the budget plan. on right. May 1st. And if only the Senate number will not be only known. Only the Senate number will not be known, but that is, tr that is no different than it would have been for operating yeah. under town meeting rules. Yeah. Now, do you expect the, uh, for, uh, the uh, all town board uh, meeting that you described in October, which was the historic, uh, an historic part of the process, do you expect that to continue going forward? Yes, I okay. expect that uh, we will still have the same kind of a budget projection meeting going forward and um, some discussion that will allow us to give guidance to the superintendent and the library director for the development of their budgets that has um, the recommendation of the manager and the imprimatur of the council because otherwise you can't get a responsible budget developed for schools and libraries and presented back to the town manager to then incorporate into the town budget. Uh, so those meetings are, here's my wish list and then a response by the town saying, um, you may be being a little bit too ambitious this year. Um, well, it's always a little bit of that possibility, <laughs> but by hit. What I, what I found in the old process, and I don't expect anything different in this one, is that uh, after the October meeting and a decision was made, and actually the, under the old process, it was up to the Finance Committee to make a recommendation mm -hmm. because that was a committee of the town meeting. And so they would say, this is the amount that we think is appropriate for the school budget. Uh, and then the, the schools have their wish list, but they ultimately understand the need to develop and did follow through developing a budget that fit the number. Uh, and unfortunately, there, we're back to the same thing all the way through is that uh, if you decide you're going to want to add something really significantly new, it is required to think about what to drop, what to drop because, because there isn't enough because there isn't to keep enough. adding. And yeah. we've always counted on new growth to get back to your other point. We've always counted on some new growth, um, but uh, it's just enough to still keep us in pace with where we are. Um, it doesn't really allow us to add anything substantially new and different. And uh, I think that's where the Community Resources Committee discussion really is going to be the most important. And since we've run out of time, we can't add anything new and substantial to this conversation. So I hope you uh, uh, got a better understanding of how uh, our chair of the Finance Committee and his colleagues are going to be working with us to uh, form a budget as uh, we move forward with standing up our new form of government. So thank you so much for being here, Andy, and good luck with your work. Thank you. You're welcome.